Everyone knows that testosterone is the single most important hormone for muscle building, and all you need to do is raise your levels to see some serious gains, right? Let's talk about that. How's it going guys? My name's Richie Kerwin, and today we're gonna to talk all about testosterone. What it is, what it does in the body, and whether you can change your testosterone levels naturally. As always, I wanna point out that I'm not telling you what you should or shouldn't eat or supplement with, and I'm not recommending any particular supplements that's entirely your choice. What I'm gonna do is help you understand what the research says about the effects of diet and exercise on testosterone. And you can use that information to help you make more informed choices. Before I start, I want to mention that a lot of the information in this video came from a great review that was recently published from Zamir et al. Let's get started. Okay, if you're interested in training hard and building muscle and strength, you've almost definitely heard of how important testosterone is. But do you know why? First off, we need to know what it is exactly. Testosterone is the main anabolic steroid in the human body and is made in the testicles in men and to a smaller degree in the ovaries in women. Besides being responsible for male sexual characteristics like a deeper voice, and facial and body hair, its main effects are to increase protein synthesis and generally increase anabolism or building up reactions and to reduce catabolism or breaking down reactions. The effect of this is to lead to an increase in muscle mass, strength and performance, which sounds pretty sweet, right? Now. The next bit is going to be a little technical, but it'll be important later on in the video. To produce testosterone, the pituitary gland in the brain first has to make luteinizing hormone. This is what causes the testicles to produce testosterone. That testosterone then travels around the body in the blood. It travels in two forms, as free testosterone, which is active, or it can also be bound to a protein, and that form is inactive. Testosterone has its effects by binding to androgen receptors in the cells. This causes our cells to activate a load of different genes, many involved in muscle growth and strength. Testosterone can also be converted to dihydrotestosterone or DHT, which is almost five times more potent than regular testosterone. Oh, and one last thing. In the UK, at least, the normal range for total testosterone men is from about nine to 29 nanomoles per liter. That's a really wide range, but men can be perfectly healthy within it. Oh, and yeah, testosterone levels in men tend to start dropping from around 30 years of age onwards. Okay, now that we have all that technical stuff out of the way, let's get to what we really want to know. What can you do to affect your testosterone levels? Well, pay attention and make sure you watch all the way through to the end to understand how this affects your gains. The first thing you can do to keep your testosterone at a healthy level is to make sure you are doing some form of resistance exercise. So hit the gym and move some heavy weights. Not only does resistance exercise increase testosterone immediately after training, but regular lifters have higher testosterone levels than non-lifters in general. As for the best type of exercise, those movements that use the most muscle mass, so think big compound movements involving the legs, chest, lats, etc., seem to be the best for stimulating the release of testosterone. It's not that there's anything wrong with isolation movements, but the more muscle worked overall, the better for increasing testosterone. Right, so the next thing to take care of is body composition, specifically body fat. A number of studies have shown that higher levels of body fat are associated with lower levels of testosterone. One explanation for this may be that body fat has higher levels of enzymes known as aromatases, and these convert testosterone to estradiol, which is a type of estrogen and that is not what you want to happen if you're trying to keep your testosterone high. Now, while keeping body fat lower is important, the next point is going to make that seem a little bit tricky. You see, calorie restriction, especially with large deficits for a long period of time, can also significantly reduce testosterone. This is why testosterone levels usually tank in natural bodybuilders at the end of a long cut or fat loss phase, just before a show. Being that lean, or at least the diet you need to be that lean, is just not good for testosterone. Something related, but slightly different, is low energy availability, which can affect a lot of athletes, especially those who do endurance sports. Energy availability is the difference between the energy that you take in and the energy you burn in relation to your fat-free mass. Chronically low energy availability can lead to relative energy deficiency in sports, or REDS, which has a number of major health problems, one of which is alterations in hormone production, leading to low levels of testosterone in men. So you need to avoid excessively high body fat, but you also need to avoid overly restrictive diets and calorie deficits. I never said this was gonna be easy. Now, 
Another thing to keep an eye on, especially if you're dieting, is your fat intake. It seems that very low fat diets of around 20% of calories from fat or below that can lead to slightly lower levels of testosterone compared to higher fat diets of about 40% of calories from fat. This is likely because of the essential role that fat plays in testosterone production, as cholesterol is used to form the basic structure of steroid hormones. Okay, moving on to micronutrients, and one that you may want to pay special attention to is vitamin D. Interestingly, higher blood levels of vitamin D are regularly associated with higher testosterone levels. On top of that, supplementing people with low vitamin D levels for about 12 months can lead to increases in total and free testosterone compared to placebo groups. Vitamin D is a pretty important vitamin as it binds to the vitamin D receptor in our cells causing a lot of major effects in our bodies. Men also have vitamin D receptors in the cells in their testicles that produce testosterone. And this is why vitamin D might lead to greater production of this hormone. Finally, there are two minerals worth mentioning in a very specific context when it comes to testosterone, zinc and magnesium. Zinc plays an important role in the production of luteinizing hormone. And as I mentioned earlier, luteinizing hormone is what causes the testicles to produce testosterone. On top of that, zinc helps with the conversion of testosterone to DHT. And as I said earlier, DHT has an even greater anabolic effect than basic testosterone. Studies have shown that zinc deficiency is associated with lower levels of testosterone and supplementing with zinc can restore testosterone concentrations back to their normal physiological range. Magnesium is another essential mineral that we need in quite high amounts, about 400 milligrams a day for men and about 300 milligrams a day for women. There seems to be an association between low magnesium levels in the body and low testosterone, which may return to normal with magnesium supplementation. The way magnesium affects testosterone isn't fully understood, but one way it might work is by reducing oxidative stress in the body, which allows for normal testosterone levels. Magnesium also seems to reduce testosterone binding to some of the sex hormone binding globulins in our blood, meaning there's more free active testosterone. Now, it's really, and I mean really important to point out that taking vitamin D or zinc or magnesium only has an effect on testosterone levels if you're already deficient in that specific nutrient. If your nutrient levels are sufficient, taking more isn't going to increase your testosterone even more. And if you have a good balanced diet or supplement already, your levels are probably already okay. That's something to bear in mind with all supplements. There's an optimum dose and taking more might not be of any benefit at all or could even be dangerous, for example, with some vitamins like vitamin D. That's why it's worth getting your blood levels tested if you're worried. Now, after hearing all these different tips, there's probably one thing that many of you are thinking. I do all those things already or at least most of them. You see, all of what I've mentioned here are just standard healthy lifestyle practices that most gym goers are probably doing already. And if you are, great. You're doing exactly what you need to do to optimize your natural testosterone production. That's probably gonna make a lot of you wonder. Well then, why aren't I super jacked yet? Here's the thing. All these healthy lifestyle tips will help you to optimize your testosterone within the normal healthy range I mentioned earlier, between nine and 29 nanomoles per liter. When people talk about the huge benefits of testosterone for building serious strength and muscle, they're actually talking about exogenous testosterone or testosterone injections, not the testosterone produced naturally in your body. You see, to get those muscle building and performance benefits, you need what's known as supraphysiological levels of testosterone. Supraphysiological means greater than the normal amount produced in the body. So. If the upper end of the normal range of testosterone is 29 nanomoles per liter, what levels do people achieve with exogenous supplementation? Well, in one study where they supplemented men with healthy testosterone levels, or about 26 nanomoles per liter, with 600 milligrams of testosterone per week, their blood levels shot to over 120 nanomoles per liter. That's just not going to happen with better diet, exercise, and some common supplements. And that's okay it's still perfectly possible to build muscle and strength without taking steroids like exogenous testosterone. They just may not be the superhero-like physiques that we often see on social media. I just wish some people in the fitness sphere were more open about their use of such substances so people were more aware of what is and isn't possible for a natural physique. Increasing testosterone gets a lot of attention and I just want to make sure that you are completely aware of what proper nutrition, supplementation and training is going to do for you instead of holding out hopes for some holy grail of gains. So 
Did this answer your testosterone questions or just smash your dreams? As always, if you have any more questions, let me know in the comments below and remember to like and subscribe to the MyProtein YouTube channel for more great evidence-based nutrition information. Thank mm -hmm. you.